Well, India and the Nordics are embarking on a new journey, a new journey of partnership, which is a win-win relationship between India and the Nordics. And a crucial part of the Nordic countries is Iceland, a country obviously tucked in Northern Europe, uh, but a country that can make a major impact, especially in the renewables, in climate change. With me is the Prime Minister of Iceland, Ma'am, welcome to Vion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ma'am, my first question to you is, how do you characterize uh, India-Iceland ties? Well, obviously, these are two very different countries. India is a whole continent so where a great many people live. In Iceland, we are 340,000, but we have many things in common. You mentioned renewables and climates. Uh, both of these nations have glaciers, which are diminishing because of climate change. And hopefully we can work together on renewable energies. I know India has been working on solar energies, but we're hoping to be able to work together also on geothermal energy, mm -hmm. which might prove crucial for India. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, there, are, there is a mutual interest in strengthening those ties. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of glaciers also. I mean, we also have a lot of glaciers. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you help us in making sure that these glaciers uh, don't recede so fast? Mm -hmm. Well, we need an energy shift, really. Iceland is working on becoming carbon neutral in 2040, which means not only reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but also you know, restoring wetlands and changing the way we use land in order to bind more carbon. So we need to do everything we can uh, in order to fulfill the Paris Agreement, but also to do more, and not least because of the glaciers and and the weather and the population, of course. So mm. it's, a, it's a huge issue. Mm. Ma'am, how do you see uh, India um, in a world which is changing very fast, India's role in this world, uh, and what can uh, India do for the world? I think India can do a lot for the world because, as I said, it's a whole continent of people with this huge, magnificent culture. Uh, a very remarkable history so obviously India can bring a lot to the world and we are already seeing uh, India taking the lead in many issues so um, I think there are the future holds a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for India. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you have to say about uh, the, the leadership of our Prime Minister, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi who um, has been uh, to Stockholm for the India Nordic Summit uh, and engaging the world in a different way now. But as I said before, I think uh, from what I can see that uh, things are changing in India and I think India has a lot of opportunities, not least when it comes to strengthening education, research, high-tech innovation, etc. So I think these are uh, probably very interesting possibilities for India. Mm. Uh, every partnership has to be a win-win partnership. Uh, what can Iceland give to India uh, so that uh, India grows in a world. India needs energy, but India also needs clean energy. Mm. Something Iceland can do on that part? Yeah, well, hopefully we can share our experiences and knowledge on geothermal energy with India. Mm. And hopefully we can do the same in some other high-tech industries mm. in Iceland. Mm -hmm. And what, what do you expect India to do for Iceland? I mean, uh, something you would like, because uh, there are a lot of Indians in the Nordics doing specifically in the IT sector, I mean, mm. providing services. But uh, you, you must be knowing about India's uh, strength in services sector. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, would you like to speak on that? I mean, services, that, uh, services which India can provide to Iceland? Well, Iceland belongs to EFTA with Norway and Liechtenstein. And we have actually been uh, in a dialogue with India about the free trade agreement. Hopefully we will see some progress made in that uh, in order to uh, build up the trade between those states. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, let's talk about something else, women leadership. Mm -hmm. You are a woman, you are a leader, you are leading a country. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel when you are at various summits uh, packed full of men as a leader? Well, you know, there are more and more women becoming leaders, which is a good thing. And I think gender equality is not only a very important thing socially, it's also a very important thing economically. So hopefully we will see more women leaders around the world. Mm. But I feel very good <laughs> in my position. And I think men and women, you know, you should try both. I think it's very good for every society to have both men and women at the table. 
Uh, uh, what do we have to say about the Me Too movement? We saw this Me Too movement uh, uh, happening and of course uh, women coming out uh, uh, when they were facing a lot of problems. So finally that movement uh, becoming a mass movement, a revolution. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a very important movement because actually gender-based violence and sexual violence isn't longer a taboo in many societies, but something that we speak open of and we need to ensure that we will change the culture after this movement, that it will actually have that influence, that we will make society better for men and women. There are countries who are specifically focusing on making sure that the world is a better place for women. Uh, what is your country doing? And you're a women leader. I mean, how are you promoting women leadership across the globe? Well, we are actually doing our very best because gender equality is an essential part of our foreign policy. So we talk about gender equality wherever we go. And what we are saying is that you need to have uh, look at everything really from the aspect of gender equality, whether you're talking about environment, mm -hmm. economy, society, you also always have to think about it in terms of gender equality. And what we have experienced in Iceland is, mm -hmm. for example, gender equality has proved good for the economy because mm -hmm. of the high uh, participation of women in the labor markets. But the world still is an unequal place for women. The world is still an unequal place for women, even in Iceland, so, so we're not there yet. And I think uh, it really matters what uh, every nation does. I think it matters what India will do in matters of gender equality, as all the other nations. And even though Iceland has been doing very, very well in these issues, we are not there yet. But did you face some problem? I mean, uh, when you're growing up in the political ladder, you do face problem. It's, it's very natural. Did you face some problem? Yes, of course. I think all women in politics face problem being a woman and, and their experiences are different from the experiences of men. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about climate change. This is a subject closer to your heart and of course Nordics are impacted the most because of the climate change, the Arctic uh, mm -hmm. uh, receding and of course the, the level of the ocean rising. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to fight it? Well, we are actually making plans. You know, Iceland is very rich in resources. We, have, we are able to use our glacial rivers to produce hydroelectric power. We have been using geothermal to produce power. So we have an advantage there, but we need to really think about how we are going to lower the energy consumption. Um, for example, from transport. So we are actually planning an energy shift when it comes to transport, using more public transport and using electricity when it comes to the car free device lab. So that's one important step that needs to be taken. We need to think about agriculture and fisheries. Mm -hmm. uh, Iceland is a fisheries nation and mm -hmm. obviously we can do a lot to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking at every sector in society on how we are going to fulfill the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. And ma'am, uh, regarding climate change, do you think that the world is not speaking in one voice, it's speaking in different voices and that's going to ultimately impact the entire humanity because climate change won't say that, okay, you are from different country or you are from different country. Well, the world should be speaking in one voice. It's not maybe doing that exactly, but I think we reached a very important uh, point with the Paris Agreement and, and I think it's vital really for the world because climate and environment is really one of the most imminent threats that we face as a human kind. Mm -hmm. So we really need to work on this together and uh, every, everybody can do something. Even though Iceland is a small country, we can do something. Mm -hmm. So it's a really important responsibility that we're carrying, all of us. A any impact of the climate change on Iceland? Because at least in South Asia, we are seeing that. You're seeing the results? The, the, of, the results of climate change. Well, we are seeing glaciers receding and getting smaller. Um, of course, we are seeing also more extremes in the weather. Uh, uh, the effect is not as visible maybe in Iceland, but we are also seeing it very clearly in the Arctic because we are at the periphery of the Arctic and we are seeing a great change in the ice coverage in the Arctic. So it's very visible there. Uh, with the receding of the ice because of the climate change, it seems there a rush has started for the resources of the Arctic. And it seems that can be really dangerous. I mean. Well, I think uh, there is a lot of political interest in the Arctic. Uh, a lot of nations are watching the development in the Arctic mm -hmm. and we have been um, focused on saying that Arctic Council is a key element in the affairs of the Arctic, but the development in the Arctic is also a global issue because it's really important for the rest of the world also what will happen in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. um, 
our policy is that the Arctic, we should uh, keep the Arctic a, a demilitarized zone. We will have to think about the people who live there, uh, the, the, uh, the people who have their home there, and we also have to think about it from the point of the environment, because, uh, for example, opening ship routes uh, through the Arctic might increase the danger of uh, oil spills pollution, etc. So we need to be very careful when it comes to the Arctic. And the Arctic has a very fragile environment. Very fragile environment, uh, but very important environment for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ma'am, let's talk about uh, uh, the India Nordic Summit, uh, which uh, is the first time that the Nordics are meeting India in this format. Mm -hmm. How do you think that this summit is going to increase the engagements between um, India, which is a large growing economy in Asia, and the Nordics uh, are very innovative. Uh, they have solutions. They have smart solutions. Um, Iceland, for example, is a country, as I've already told you, and you have yourself mentioned, works on renewables. So how is this go format going to increase the engage uh, engagement between the uh, Nordics and India? Well, I hope we will be able to talk a little bit about not only trade, which is important, but also more cooperation when it comes to research, for example, in geothermal, but also in innovation and high tech industry. Mm -hmm. There is a, a project on the smart cities project, which we hopefully uh, the Nordic countries in India can work together on. Mm -hmm. Uh, really about making cities more sustainable uh, and a better place to live for the people who live there. So hopefully we can um, join forces in, on these issues. Um, it's, uh, and it's a really, uh, hopefully an opportunity for us, the Nordic countries, in having uh, this dialogue with India. Mm. As you said, the growing economy uh, becoming more and more important. Uh, uh, about this idea, this new idea of this uh, Nordics and of course engagement with a particular country. With India it's the first time but this is the second time that Nordic countries are having uh, engagement with a particular country in this format. Uh, uh, are you planning to have this engagement with rest of the world or other countries as well? Well, it's been a... Uh, you can say that these have been experiments that have, went, you know, that have gone very well. The Nordics are of course you know, our cooperation is very close. Our culture is very close. So we, we consider ourselves really a one family of, of countries. So we can quite easily work together in, in international relations like this. So this is an idea whose time has come? Yeah, I think so. It's, okay. it's, 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 a, it's a good format, really, for us. But why did it took so long to have uh, this format when the Nordics have so much in common, uh, culturally, language, even history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely history because Iceland was built uh, in around 900 and the, it, it was Norwe Norwegians, discontented Norwegians that actually settled Iceland. <laughs> so we're really all very related. And same our, people. Yes, the same people and the Icelandic language is probably the oldest language in the Nordic family. So I think uh, this is maybe just a new way of thinking international relations. The Nordics come fronting this meeting together. Uh, so, any other uh, country in the pipeline you're having, you're planning to have? I mean, no plans made yet, okay. but but definitely interest in in you know keeping this up. Uh -huh. uh, uh, let's talk about something else. That's the issue of terror that has plagued a lot of countries, especially in Europe. Uh, we have seen so many terror attacks happening. Um, in America, we have seen attacks and in South Asia, it's also a big issue. What do you have to say about this issue of terror and how can we contain this issue? Well, uh, of course, uh, you have, India has, you know, known terror for quite a long time, terrorist acts. Uh, we are, Europe is seeing more of it now, but Europe also had a, had a decade of that in the 70s and 80s of terrorist acts. I think, uh, the only viable, sustainable solution to the acts of terrorism is really trying to find ways to promote peaceful solutions when it comes to uh, disputes uh, and also thinking about whether our society uh, is really creating an atmosphere for uh, or uh, an environment that uh, somehow increases and increases the danger of terrorism. So I think it's a really complicated set up, but I think this is something that definitely is going to be a big issue in European politics as well as in the rest of the world. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Ma'am, uh, my last question is on India. India's, uh, India wants to be part of the expanded UNSC. India wants to be part of NSG, that's the Missile Technology Group. And India has already been part of the MTCR. What do you have to say? What, what's the position of uh, your country on, on, the, on these uh, positions, expansion of United Nations Security Council, India being part of the NSG? Well, we have supported uh, the change, really changing the United Nations Security Council and expanding it uh, because, of course, the United Nations Security Council is built on a, really a, a world as it was several decades ago. So we have supported uh, in reorganizing the United Nations Security Council and India becoming part of that. Uh, and have you heard the song uh, of uh, a Bollywood movie, Gerua Hua, um, in which the Bollywood actor Shah Rukh Khan played and the scenes were from yeah. Iceland? Yes, I have. I have seen the video, which was actually, as you said, taken in Iceland. And actually, you know, we have had, you know, more and more interest coming from India in shooting Bollywood films in Iceland and we we're very happy. To, and Bollywood films have also become more popular in Iceland. Oh. So. Have you watched any Bollywood movies? Yes, I have. Can I can't name? remember. I can't remember any the actor? names. <laughs> no, actually no. But there was one really popular about an Indian wedding. I can't remember which was shown in the Icelandic cinemas a few years ago. Okay. Very popular and very funny too. Well, thank you so much uh, uh, for talking to Vion and discussing various issues, whether it's climate change, whether it's uh, global politics, uh, women's leadership, or whether it's Bollywood. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. It was a pleasure.